Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Easy Med, your easy way to understand medical concepts. In today's detailed session, we'll be diving into an important topic, placenta previa, in a clear and simplified way. So stay tuned till the end, and let's make this topic super easy together. Placenta previa is an implantation of the placenta in the lower uterus, near the fetal presenting part. It is an improperly implanted placenta in the lower uterine segment near or over the cervical os. Use of both abdominal and transvaginal ultrasound allows measurement of the distance between the internal cervical us and the lower border of the placenta. Placenta previa occurs in about 1 in 200 to 300 pregnancies in the United States. Women of Asian or African ethnicity have an increased risk. Smoking and cocaine use are also associated with placenta previa. Placenta previa is also more likely to occur if the fetus is male. Bleeding may not occur until labor starts, when cervical changes disrupt placental attachment. When the diagnosis of placenta previa is confirmed, medical interventions are based on the condition of the mother and fetus. Now let's discuss about the types of placenta previa. First, marginal placenta previa. It is sometimes called low-lying placenta. Placenta is implanted in the lower uterus, but its lower border is more than 3 centimeters from the internal cervical us. Partial placenta previa. Lower border of the placenta is within 3 centimeters of the internal cervical us, but does not completely cover the us. Complete placenta previa. The internal cervical us is covered entirely by the placenta when the cervix is dilated fully. Crash home care. Criteria for outpatient management include the woman is clinically stable uh, with, with no evidence of active bleeding. The woman can maintain bed rest at home. Home is within a reasonable distance from the hospital. Emergency transportation is available 24 hours a day. The woman can verbalize understanding of risks associated with placenta previa and how to manage her care. Teach the mother and the family what to monitor and emphasize the importance of assessing vaginal discharge or bleeding after each urination or bowel movement or more often as needed, counting fetal movements daily, assessing uterine activity daily, or omitting sexual intercourse to prevent disruption of the placenta. Spontaneous membrane rupture can occur at any time and with varying amounts of fluid loss, so the woman and her family should be taught to return to the hospital for evaluation. Hospital care. Periodic non-stress tests and biophysical profiles provide added information about the fetal condition. A significant change in fetal heart activity an episode of increased vaginal bleeding or signs of preterm labor should be reported immediately to the physician. Prepare for ultrasound to confirm the diagnosis. Vaginal examinations or any other actions that would stimulate uterine activity are avoided. Maintain bed rest in a side-lying position as prescribed. Monitor amount of bleeding, treat signs of shock, administer intravenous IV fluids, blood products, or tocolytic medications as prescribed. RHD immune globulin may be prescribed. If bleeding is heavy, a cesarean delivery may be performed. Complete placenta previa will require a cesarean delivery. Thank you so much for watching this video on placenta previa. I hope it helped you understand the topic clearly and made your learning a little easier with EasyMed. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more easy and detailed medical explanations. And if you have any doubts or topics you'd like me to cover next, just drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. See you in the next video. Until then, keep learning with EasyMed.